Hi folks, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video we're going to look at how to use Euler's formula to take the Laplace transform of some interesting trig functions. The motivation and goal for this is really quite basic. Sometimes you might have some exotic trig functions that are used to force a dynamic system and the stinker isn't in a Laplace transform table. Turns out you can use Euler's formula in conjunction with what you have in the transform table to take the Laplace transforms of those stinkers. So the goal, again, pretty basic, be able to apply Euler's formula to exotic trig functions. Here's Euler's formula in equation one, and I'm guessing you've probably used this before when you were studying complex numbers and had to convert from polar form to rectangular form or vice versa. If you manipulate equation 1 a little bit, you can get the two results shown in equation 2 for a sine and a cosine. What we're going to do is take trig functions that are the product of a bunch of sines and cosines and turn them into the sum of a bunch of sines and cosines because sine and cosine is almost always in a Laplace transform table. And once we have them in that summed form, we can just pretty easily write out the Laplace transforms. The approach goes like this. We're going to take all the sine and cosine terms in the expression and replace it with those two quantities in equation two. Then you have to expand all the terms, and that gets a little bit algebra intensive, but not too bad. You end up using the old first outside inside last or foil scheme. Then you have to be a little creative and rearrange the terms you have so that they look like the forms in equation two. And once you have them like that, you can just substitute back into the sine and cosines and Laplace away. So we're just going to do one example and then we'll take a look at it in MATLAB also. The first step is to replace those cosines with the exponential form from Euler's formula. So there's the first one, cosine 3t, and here's the cosine 11t. Now you have to multiply them all out. So we'll use FOIL, so I'm just factoring out the 1 fourth and then doing a first outside inside last. So there's the e to the 3jt times e to the 11jt, we just sum the exponents, and here's the outside, so it's the 3jt times the negative 11jt, the inside, and last. And now we just have to rearrange that so it looks like the form that we had on the previous page, I think it was equation two. So we can see that we have these 14JT uh, terms and 8JT terms. And fortunately, they're beautiful little cosine expressions. So we can go straight to the function of time, where now we've gone from products of cosines to sums of cosines. And Laplace. There's the 14T and there's the 8T. Voila. Well, let's have a look at this in MATLAB. How about we use a live script for this? Like so, let me get this centered. And we're gonna do this symbolically. So I'm just going to create a couple symbolic variables an S and a T, and now we'll form the function of time, which was cosine 3t times cosine 11 times t. Why don't we plot this thing? There it is. And I just went ahead and made the line width a little bigger so we could see it in this video and also increase the font size. So we're going to be taking the Laplace transform of this stinker and let's just do it and see if we get the same thing that we had when we did it by hand using our fancy 
Euler's formula. That looks about right. I think I left it as 14 squared and 8 squared on the previous page. But otherwise, that looks great. That's it, just short and sweet. We looked at Euler's formula and figured out how to apply it to taking the Laplace transform of trig functions that are the products of sines and cosines by converting them into trig functions that are the sum of sines and cosines. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.